So far we've been talking about globalization. We have discussed how industry shifts overseas. We've talked about the global assembly line. We've talked about how production becomes global, for instance, in a production of Nike shoes. Here we're going to look at some other theories of globalization, especially theories of cultural globalization. For the anthropologist Arjuna Padurai, globalization consists of different scapes. He lists five scapes that can help us understand cultural globalization. The first is ethnoscape. By ethnoscape, he means people and groups such as tourists, immigrants, refugees, exiles, and guest workers who move around the globe. They come from villages in India to Dubai, Haitians who go to Canada, etc. People move much further distances than before. Secondly, he talks about technoscape. Technology now moves at much greater speeds across national boundaries. So, for instance, a steel complex in Libya may involve technology from China, Russia, and Japan. Another scape that Apadurai discusses is a finance scape, and that is the movement of global capital and finance through currency markets, stock exchanges, and commodity speculations. There are media scapes, which is the global production and dissemination of media and media images. So, for instance, images of America in Hollywood films or American soap operas seem so real and yet fantasy-like when watched in Beirut or Beijing. Martial arts and worldwide wrestling create new cultures of masculinity and violence. And finally, there is the idioscape or ideologies of states or movements. These could be religious movements or political movements or others. Arjuna Padurai also introduces the idea of what he calls deterritorialization. So as ethnic and national populations move around the globe, they're no longer tied to their home country in terms of territory, but rather by emotional ties and attachments to their home country. He gives the example of Sikhs in England, Canada, and the US who have the idea of Khalistan. We can apply this idea of deterritorialization to all of the various scapes, as none have a necessary territorial base or are confined to a specific location. According to, globaliza according to Apadurai, globalization itself is not just one movement, but the movement of several of these different areas that may come into conflict with each other. And that is what he means when he talks about disjuncture. So what are some examples of the disjunctures between these different spheres? Apadurai gives a few examples, including the disjuncture between finance scapes and idioscapes, where ideologies of national sovereignty conflict with transnational control over finances and industry, Another possible disjuncture is that between idioscapes and ethnoscapes, when the overseas diaspora of ethnic groups conflicts with the ideology of religious and nationalist movements. Apadurai gives us one theory of globalization, what some have referred to as a postmodern, postcolonial theory of globalization. Much like we talked about earlier when we talked about postmodern social theory, for a Padurai, everything is a construct, including the nation state. There are no more borders or nation states, but rather there is a free movement of people and capital. Bijou Matthew, drawing on Henri Lefebvre, criticizes this view of globalization and provides an alternative theory. He says that the global economy operates through the state. It's only capital and the bourgeoisie who can move about freely. For the working classes, borders are experienced as tangible and actually even more hostile than before. Matthew says that when a Padurai talks about deterritorialized culture, he is generalizing the bourgeois experience to all immigrants, as the middle class immigrant negotiates borders much more easily. But workers' lives are marked by the intense negotiation of borders. <laughs>